everyone welcome back to the channel so i'm going to continue with this page today this is from walk in the woods by Layla Dula. i will do link this in the description of the video she's also just released her new compilation book as well which is a compilation of the flower year and florabunda combined um in a, into a different format so it's a similar format to this one um both of those boots combined that's available on amazon uk now so i will link that one down below as well if i remember um hopefully i will so we're going to do this little mouse today i'm going to get him out of the way i've been panicking a little bit about filming this as a color along because i do struggle with i think it's animals where they sort of have this sort of you know where they scrunch the legs up like that and it's kind of a shape like that and then i struggle with the hair strokes the direction of the hair strokes around these areas especially on this big squirrel here um so it just makes me it does make me panic a bit but we're just going to do it and rather i was going to come on and do all the background first and then part two do the mouse but i thought you know what get the thing that i'm most terrified of out the way first so we're going to do the fur on the mouse first why not and then it's plain sailing from there isn't it so i'm just going to move this box off my desk it's taking up all the room it's all my um, Etsy shop stuff. Right, and let's get this camera down here a little bit. So we're going to do this little guy. I thought, because I'm doing these mushrooms, browns like this one, they'll be the same as these. I'll do the most greys. So I pulled out some greys. I pulled out some beige red and some coral as well for the pinky bit of the tail of the ears and the, possibly the nose. Should I do them a little pink nose? And then I pulled out greys and I pulled out just this um, burnt ochre because I don't know if I might add a few strokes of that in somewhere. But I thought I would start off by doing um, the whole mouse in a light layer of this warm grey 272. So I'm just going to do that. I'm going to let's bring you in a little bit. Let's hope this camera doesn't turn. So yeah, I'm just going to do a light layer of this all over. So all over the back of that here, I'm just going to leave this bit of the uh, inside of that ear out because I obviously want that bit pink. And then the tail, I'm not going to do the tail in grey, the tail's going to be pink as well so we're not going to go over that with this grey. I'm just getting a base down and getting rid of a lot of this white space. And we'll go from there so we'll see. We'll see guys. <laughs> see what this little dude turns out like. I think I'm more comfortable painting fur now because I've done a lot of practice with painting fur and I feel more comfortable doing that with than with coloured pencils but it all comes with practice doesn't it? So I'm just going to get the bits I want pink in with the pink first just so I don't forget and go over anything I don't want to. So with the beige red 132 I'm just going to go into this little a bit the beige red is a lovely color for things like this for like mouse's little ears and tails and nose because it's not too vibrant it's the exact kind of pink that you that you want to go for so i'm just getting a lightish layer down on that to start with just so i don't forget what color i'm actually going with on there and i think that's that so now I'm going to start putting the darkest colours in. So I've picked out a dark sepia for this 175 and I thought we would do all the areas I want the darkest. So I'm thinking where Layla Dooley's put this sort of lines here. I'm going to start by following that. Now if you don't want to do harsh lines yet, you can build up your colours by just doing a circular motion you don't have to do the hair strokes but I'm just putting a few in so that I can gauge where I want things to be but you can soften this as well you can really soften it down and if you find something's too harsh get your white um the white's a good one to dull anything down if you've made it too harsh and you think oh I want to soften that a bit the white's really really good to go over with because it will put that white coating over which will dull, it, dull down any harshness so I'm going to pull that through there 
I'm going to pop a bit of darkness around the eye. But I'm not doing hair strokes here, I'm just kind of getting that colour in. Just around the back of the eye there. I'm not going to do many hair strokes on the face. I feel like with animals, a lot of the time, they're a lot softer on the face. You'll notice the hairs on the face are... There's not as many coarse hairs around the face. So I'm just softening around there. I'm going to put a bit of this darkness around the top of the ear. And underneath a little bit. I'll bring that colour up there. Oh, there's someone at my door. And that was my postman with my ink for my com uh, computer printer. I've been getting free ink like I don't, I don't know what. Because <laughs> I had to create some products for my Etsy, Etsy shop. So I've been using my uh, printer a lot. To print all the bootmarks and my art prints. There we go. Just create a little shadow there behind the ear. Behind that ear there. And then I think We'll continue with this colour, pulling it down a bit more under here, just lightly. I'm going lightly to start with, and then we'll see what it see what it looks like. But I'm going to pull the colour all over the back now. I'm going to make it a bit darker around the edge. And then lighter, so there's a bit of highlight on the fur somewhere around here. But we're going to make it dark and follow that line around here. So you will notice on animals as well that the larger the area, a lot of the time the longer the hair strokes or fur strokes, uh, the smaller the area, the smaller the little strokes so when we get round to the foot they'll be well I might not even do the strokes I might just do a bit of scuffling like this um around here and just save the the big strokes for the body I find as well I'll probably soften these lines down quite a lot because I find the more what would you call it? The more defined the stroke, the coarser the, the appearance of the fur, I would say. So I do want to soften this right down. Once I put my initial colour in, I do want to soften it down because I don't want this little mouse to be too coarse. I want you to see some strokes and some texture, but I don't want them to be like really wiry sort of hair that some animals have but I don't think a mouse has that sort of wiry hair I think the more soft I would say in appearance what do you think <laughs> I'm not talking rubbish who's good at fur who who would say the the comfortable comfortable and confident to do fur to colour or even draw if you draw yourself who's very confident you probably want to click on this tutorial if you was confident though. <laughs> you not learn much from me being all over jittery over here wondering what I'm doing. Right, I'm very lightly just I'm barely touching the page, I'm just sort of popping some little lines in but really soft. And then I'm going to try and work out where I want this hair <laughs> going around this leg. This is what I struggle with. I don't know where the hair would um, be coming round and it, it freaks me out. I think, you know, you would think this way around. But then you sort of get a mismatch of, yeah, go around, go around there. We'll follow it round. You can always erase it if it looks a bit daft, but.
I think we can blend this, we can really blend this out as well. Just gonna go around where they've put that line at, just so we can get that really defined line around there. There we go, we're just building up. I'm going to put a few little tiny hairs. Remember, there's not many on the face, but I do think there will be some coming from the top of the head. And then it would be really soft around the eyes, so make sure that you're not dragging these harsh lines too far onto the face, but I do want some on the head. And a bit coming down from here. From under the mouth. Get it dark under there. I'm using small circular motions around the nose. We're not doing any hair strokes there. I'm just doing a small circular motion, just a bit around the nose with this color. I'm bringing it up onto the top of the head. So with fur, it's a case of building up with your colors. So we build up to our end result. So I'm just going to do a bit around the little paw now. So I am going to do, I'm not going to do hair strokes at the moment. I'm just going to get this colour in by using small circular motions. And then perhaps if you want a few hair strokes coming up at the top where you can see that bit of fluff there. You can pop a few in there. I think now we'll go in with our mid-tone grey. So I have got this one, Warm Grey 274. I just felt like warm greys would be really nice on this one. So I'm just coming in where we've kind of been with the darkest grey, the dark sepia. I'm popping in a bit of this colour now just around where we've been with that other colour. Just gonna pop a bit under that ear there and join it onto the to the face. Not forgetting which parts we've done hair strokes on and which parts we've not. If you want to soften any of your hair, hair strokes at this point, you can just use a really light pressure and just go over lightly over all of it and that will soften down your lines if you use this pencil. 
So here we said we didn't want him looking too coarse. You can really soften his fur down with this. Now I'm going to go in with my lighter grey again. So this is the lightest grey, 1 grey 272. And again, I'm going to go over everywhere. I maybe want to soften it down a bit. So I'm not doing hair strokes. I'm just using a very light pressure. So just almost skimming over in between those strokes to really soften them out a bit. Now, if there's anywhere around the face where you want it to be left a bit lighter, like I might want to leave this little highlight in there, then you can go in with your white if you want to keep that very bright. So I am going to go in with a white, if I can find my white pencil. I think it's already out somewhere from last time I used it. Oops, I've just knocked one down the back of my desk. That's not good. So I'm using white 101 and I'm just going to brighten up some of the areas I want a little bit brighter. This looks so much cuter zoomed out as well, like to my eye. <laughs> when it's zoomed in you can sort of see all the imperfections. I'm going to brighten up this little highlight around his face. So anywhere you want softened up, this is really nice for softening up anywhere as well that you want softened. And then last but not least, if there's anywhere you want to stand out a bit better with your darks, because once you've got all your lights in, if you want to go back in with the dark sepia and just put a few, you know, I've put loads, but if you want to put a few more, darker areas in you can and you don't have to go so hard you can again you can skim this over the top of the page very lightly rather than going in harsh or if you want a few little more defined lines you can go in with a harder pressure and more of a point on your pencil that's up to you gonna put a few darker bits around his back and coming out of there. Just darkening up at the bottom where we'd have a bit of a shadow at the bottom. Now, I'm not doing any hair strokes here on this part. I'm just pushing that colour in.
And the only other thing I'm going to do is deepen up the pink tail a little bit. Put a bit of shadow area into the tail. This time I'm going to use the Coral 131 just to deepen up a little bit on the right at the base of the tail. So I'm going to deepen up that a bit a little bit, pull that colour through. Just deepen up some of the areas a little bit. So maybe right on the tip as well. And then if you want to deepen up anywhere inside the ear, you can go in and deepen that up a little bit if you want to. Maybe even a bit on the end of the nose. And then I'm going back in with the red beige just to blend that colour in. like that now i'm gonna you don't have to but i'm gonna use a black to sort of make that line out inside the eye even darker so i'm just gonna get my black pencil 199 and the camera might be a bit fussy with where i'm putting this so i'm gonna go straight over the highlight that's already been put in because again i'm gonna put the highlight back in myself just because it's a lot brighter when you do it yourself with the gel pen so let's pop those highlights back in let me get this gel pen going first it's being temperamental lately i'm gonna put those highlights back in there i've just gone over the black a bit where i didn't want to so we can go back in just fix that there we go if you want any highlights anywhere else, you can pop some in if you want a little bit of a highlight going on on the tail. You can pop a bit of a highlight, you might not see it much, but it's there. <laughs> you could put a little highlight on the end of the nose. There. And anywhere else you might want a highlight, you might want to do some where it's lightest. Where the fur is. That's up to you. If you want to make it look like the light's shining off his back a little bit. There we go. And I think it's got a bit of a highlight around the edge of the ears. It's quite a cute little mouse. <laughs> So I'm going to zoom out, it's not that far, it's a bit much. So that's what that's looking like. It's not too bad, it's not too bad. <laughs> but if you came for just that tutorial, that is the end of the mouse now. But I am going to continue in colouring some of the other page where we've only used 20 minutes up or so in my time. So let me just adjust this angle on this tripod. I forgot the colours of the mushrooms that I used. They're all out on my desk, but I kind of like, hmm, what colours did I use? I think I'll do these ones, these little ones. So if I remember rightly, it was burnt carmine. It was, wasn't it? It was, was it this one? I think it was this one cadmium orange and then we had a naples yellow i think 
it was I think it was similar colors <laughs> it was something like that so we're gonna do these mushrooms here with these so first off I think I went straight in with the burnt carmine so burnt carmine 193 and we did the bottom of the mushroom so if we just go straight in with head pressure head to medium pressure I'm going to do the stalk bits after, so I'll just leave those white for now. But we're going to get that burnt carmine really worked in. And then we're going to lift off. So from a medium to hard pressure, we're going to go into a soft, really light, really light pressure and just pull that colour up a little bit. Because we're going to bring the cadmium orange into this section. So I'll just pull it up a little bit like that. Then we're going to use cadmium orange 111 and we're going to go over this little bit here and we're going to pull that colour up and leave a little bit on the tip and then we're going to add the Naples yellow 185 to the very top. And that is those mushrooms. So back in again with the burnt carmine. I wonder what colour I should do my squirrel on the other illustration. Whether I should do a red squirrel or a grey squirrel. I know what I'm going to do though, there's something stuck to my page, what's annoying me, I'm just trying to erase it a little bit, unless it's a mark what won't come off, that would be a disaster, don't know where that's come from, going in with the cadmium orange now, get the cadmium orange in, And then the Naples yellow. And back in again on this one. Cadmium orange. nipples yellow now I'm just going to sharpen these pencils my sharpener is very noisy so if you've got headphones and you might want to take them out just while I sharpen them I've got an electric sharpener and it is it is actually quite noisy so I'm going to use that now that's one pencil two pencils and three pencils there we go all done <laughs> we can do these other mushrooms so we're coming in on these ones doing here as well so i think i'm gonna have a problem with my hand being in the way i might have to why is it good blurry when you zoom in like that on the camera i'm just gonna pull it up a little bit now you know that what we're doing I'll pull the camera up a little bit because it's still going blurry, isn't it? Is it just me? It's really, I don't know. I may as well do this one here as well, just where I'm here. And then going to make up my orange. And then Naples yellow right at the tip of the mushroom. Again, burnt caramel at the bottom. Caramel. 
can be an orange. And nipples yellow. Oh, there's something exciting as well. I don't know if I mentioned it in a in another video. But um YouTube have selected certain channels to send out what they call high fives. And it's just a little a little thank you for creating on YouTube, I think, as far as I'm aware. So they sent out like a code to redeem a free Greg's sausage roll. <laughs> And then there was a code to um, redeem a YouTube neon light, a limited edition YouTube neon light. Um, and there's only a thousand of them. So I've managed to get one. It's not arrived yet. It says it's only going to come at the end of June. But I've managed to get my hands on one. So that will be coming in June. When it comes, I'll show you super excited it's like a youtube player button but a neon like light light thing and then there was a you could enter into a prize drawer as well to win like to go to like a social event in manchester was it um with other creators no i entered it just for crack because i thought what's the odds of them actually picking me if it got to something like that because I'm not a social butterfly, <laughs> let me tell you. But I thought, what's the odds? But I thought, go on, just enter it for, for a laugh. See what happens, so we'll see. <laughs> There's only like, a very limited amount of people being picked for that. I think it's like 50 people or something, so I doubt that would happen. But, you know, if it did... And I could take a plus one. If I could take my partner with me, I'd go. But if it was a thing where I had to go on my own, I don't think I'd have the confidence to go to something like that. I really don't. I really don't. Naples yellow. No, is that all those mushrooms? I think it is. Now I'm gonna go in on the stalks. I'm gonna use the Naples or uh, Naples yellow, sorry, that I've got in my hand, but a light pressure. I'm just gonna cover these stalks with a light pressure of this to start with. And then I'm gonna add a different color to deepen up. I'll just get that color in initially. I think that one comes down here, almost. I don't know what these ones are here. It looks like they could be stalks to mushrooms that are hiding behind the mouse. Or maybe they're just stalks from leaves. I'm going to leave those ones for now. Let's just do these ones over here. <laughs> I don't like not being sure about what I'm colouring. So I'd rather just leave it till I come back to the next time. Till I come back to part two and then I'll deal with that. <laughs> So, got that initial colour in. Now I'm going to go in with something like... Should we go in with this one? Raw Rumba 180. And I'm just going to darken up a little bit. Darken up under the... Blend really nicely together these colours. The orcas in these brown tones. And we did the gardening the other day as well. It's like a forest down the side of our garden. Because it's our house is like um it's semi-detached, so one side is obviously attached to another house. And on one side, this council land, well, they maintain that land, or they're supposed to. And all they've been doing lately is cutting the grass, but not strimming around the edges. 
and there's weeds and there's nettles and there's ivy and it all comes over our fence over our side all the weeds and nettles and brambles and ivy everywhere it is and it's it's knackering it absolutely exhausts you <laughs> trying to pull all that off the fence and because ivy it's just it's rife isn't it ivy and it's so hard to pull off fencing as well once it's grown onto it But I keep telling the council to come and trim it all back, but will they? Will they heck? <laughs> there we go. I think that's leaking cute. Oh, look, we've got some little acorns, are they? Are they acorns or concrete? No, they're acorns, those, aren't they? Little acorns up here, they're cute. But yeah, I think that's it for part one. Um, I'm thinking so. What should we do? I forgot what colour I use for these mushrooms, you know. I've got all the colours out my on my desk, but I can't for the life of me. I think what colours I actually used on there. I cannot remember. You know what, I'm going to do one leaf. We'll do this leaf here. So we'll use grass green 166 and just cover it all. So we'll do a light layer all over that leaf. Why not? Let's get some green into the mix. Let's start our background off ready for part two. So that's our light layer of that one. And then I'm going to go in with... Oh, I've dropped another pencil off the edge of my desk. <laughs> green opaque 174. I'm going to deepen up this middle bit a little bit. So I'm going to pull up from the bottom. And then I'm going to pull from the top and leave it a bit lighter in the centre there and then I think with these leaves I think I'll do darker in the centre leaving them lighter on the tips so from this we'll sort of and don't worry it'll all blend nicely when we get our next colour into the mix but yeah I think that'll look really nice like that Deepening up that edge bit there just because it's behind that mushroom. What's the smallest pencil you've ever been able to colour with without putting it in an extender? Like if you've just had hold of it like this. What's the smallest pencil? How many centimetres? <laughs> I only do centimetres and inches. That's all I can do in my head. I can't do millimetres. Whenever there's something on Amazon that I want to buy and it's in millimetres, I have to go and get a, conver a conversion thing because I'm like, how big's a millimetre? I have literally no clue. Gonna make that bit dark there. Just because it's behind that mushroom again. And I'm gonna add a little bit of the permanent green 266 just to bring that colour through a little bit. And then I'm going to go back in with the lightest green we use, the grass green 166. And we're going to go into all the areas that's left. I'm going to push this right into the two for the paper now, get all that white space filled up. Now if you don't want it to be as vibrant and you want it to stay this light, just use a blender pencil rather than going back in with this colour. But as I've been quite vibrant on the other illustrations on this page, I thought I may as well be vibrant on this one as well. 
It's going to be a very, very vibrant page. Why not? Why not? So I'm just going to get my eraser to erase something I've gone over on this little mushroom here. Because it will annoy me if I don't get rid of that. And I'll up there. At the edge there. <laughs> What my line, can I have a pussy? Pussy, oh my woolly word. What are you doing, Krista? So I'm just gonna put a few little highlights on these mushrooms in this leaf and then we'll call that part one. So I might do a little wiggle a bit like that so it looks, almost looks like there's a little hole in the leaf. I think that's what I did on some of the other leaves on the illustration. And then these little mushrooms here, we're going to put our white highlights on these. So this is what I've done on my other illustration, is just put some bigger, some smaller little dots. And we've made these mushrooms look very magical. So you can put a lot close together, it'll look even more magical. <laughs> like that. And do that on all of them. Right, I've kept to just the bottom part of the mushroom to be honest and then pulled a bit a few of the little uh, dots a bit further up but we've sort of kept them at the bottom of the mushroom mostly So, have you spotted any more new books, new releases by anyone? Have you bought a book that's not new, but it's new to you and you've been enjoying colouring in it? Anything like that? Anyone? And you'll be able to see on these ones that there's quite a lot of dotting detailing in that Johanna's already put in on these ones so I'm just going over all that as well you'll see these little black dots that Johanna's already put in there I'll just cover those up with the white dots Can hear lots of birds outside today. I love getting the little um, bird food things for the tree in the garden. It's not really our tree, it's like the neighbour's tree, but half of it like kind of comes into our garden. So I put the little bird feeders in it because <laughs> I've nowhere else to put them. So like sneakily using the tree to put my bird feeder up. Almost done with this guys. Part two is going to be a lot of leaves and those big mushrooms which we're going to do the same colour as the ones we did in the other illustration. And we've also got those little acorns which are quite cute. I'll have to decide what colours I want to pick out for those. I think I'll have to reference a picture of an acorn. I'm not quite sure about colours for them. I was referencing pictures last night of cocktails because I thought it would be nice to do a bookmark to sell on my Etsy shop that will be good to buy for teachers' presents. You know how kids buy the teachers' presents when they're leaving? I thought if there's a nice bookmark with with like a cock painting of cocktails on, saying like um, school's out, cocktail time or something, or something along those lines, or just cocktail time even <laughs> I don't know something I'm trying to come up with ideas 
But yeah, that is our part one. Let me zoom back out. Yeah, that is part one. So you can see all three illustrations there together if my camera will stay in one place and stop falling all over the show. But let's pop it back. There we go. So that's our three illustrations so far. We've got our snail and mushrooms and our little Macy down there which will look really cute when the rest of the page is done but we'll do that in part two it'll be, be a lot easier to just get that done without panicking about what i'm doing with this fur on this uh, mouse because it's over with now so there we go this comes up even higher doesn't it this tripod no way it's not because my charger and my phone is plugged in there we go get rid of that so that's the that's the page properly it's a really big book this is a really big book. It's bigger than A4. Definitely bigger than A4. But yeah, there we go. There's a close-up. Do a close-up of them ones. Close-up of our little mouse. I think I picked the right colour doing grey. Because if I'd have done brown, it would have blended in with these mushrooms that I'm doing this colour. So yeah, I think grey was the only option for that one. This one, I think I'll do a, do a red squirrel. I think it will look really nice with a being a red squirrel and then it's not too same you know as the mouse i'm waffling now i'm waffling guys anyway if you enjoyed this video please do hit the thumbs up comment down below subscribe if you're new and i will see you in the next one thanks for watching Bye bye